G'day, I'm Paul. So Toyota kind of broke the internet when they said they were putting a four-cylinder diesel in the 70 series Land Cruiser. And it got me thinking, is a four-cylinder with more torque better than the V8 with less torque, but you know, a V8, <laughs> I mean, you can't really go wrong with that. So today, that's what I wanted to figure out. So I've assembled 270 series, the 79, which is the four cylinder turbocharged diesel variant in auto against the 76, which is a manual V8. And I'm gonna put them through a torture test today, along with a drag race at the end to figure out which is actually quickest in a straight line. Our torture test is going to include our trailer dyne. That's capable of putting a load on the vehicle to simulate it going up a steep hill with a big resistance on it. We use this in our big ute mega test recently and also in our SUV mega test as well and it really pushed the vehicles to their limits. Then we're going to head out to our hill road which basically simulates a country road with some steep climbs as well and for that we're going to use our big trailer over there that's 3,500 kilos and then we're going to cap the video off with a drag race and a rolling race as well. Now you might be wondering these two don't weigh the same. Well we did think of that. We've added extra weight to the 79 ute so they are as equal as we can make them. If you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this video, you can use the time codes that are on the screen. Or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we do four cylinder versus V8. Okay, so welcome to the Starship Enterprise. This is where we're gonna be doing our first test. We're gonna be using what's called a trailer dyne. So it's a device that is able to impart a constant load on the vehicle. And while it may look like a little trailer, it can do up to 10 kilonewtons of load on the vehicle, which is absolutely enormous. You can't really equate that to towing in the real world because a 10 kilonewton load here could be equivalent to a three and a half ton trailer towing up a 40% grade as an example. Uh, it is really hard to convert the two. All you need to know is that it's gonna be consistent across both cars and it's gonna be applying a lot of load to the vehicle. We're gonna be using three kilonewtons of load. That's gonna match the SUV and the ute test that we did recently. So we'll have a good comparison. We'll do a zero to 100 run and compare that to some times that we logged earlier in the day for the four cylinder and the V8. Then we'll also do a fuel economy run around the bowl as well where we do a lap with the load running and we'll compare that to the lap that we did earlier without any load on the vehicle to see how much extra fuel you're going to be using when you do tow with your 70 series. So I'm going to set this load to three kilonewtons and we're going to dial up a zero to 100 run. So hold on. Okie dokie, here we go. Oh, that is applying a lot of resistance to the vehicle. It's all right. It's 60 k's an hour. We go all the way through to 100 k's an hour. Now keep in mind, some of the vehicles that we've tested before with our trailer dyne don't actually make 100 k's an hour. I've got this pinned to the board here and it feels like we're running out of steam there. 92, no, 93, it's not gonna go any higher than that, 94. And that's about it. So uh, didn't quite get to 100 k's an hour, so we'll just record the zero to 90 time. Okay, so we're back at the office. I wanted to run you through the results before we hop into the four cylinder and do a comparison here with the V8. Just as a friendly reminder, with the trailer dyne running, the vehicle is actually having a constant load applied to it. And the whole purpose of that is so that it is easy to benchmark between different vehicles. We set the load on the trailer dyne, it's always applying the same resistance, and then we can accurately measure fuel economy and acceleration times. If you are towing something else, it is going to vary depending on how you're driving and what you're doing, but this is the only way we could do it so that the results are easy to benchmark against each car. So 76 was the V8, the zero to 90 took 25 point five, six seconds. So it did take quite some time. I also had to drop back to fourth to maintain 100 k's an hour when we had the cruise control set. It just didn't have enough torque in fifth to keep it moving at 100 k's an hour with our load on the back. So the fuel economy was 35.3 litres per 100 k's for our lap of the five kilometre bowl. And that is an increase of 173% over the standard highway fuel economy of 12.9 litres per 100 k's. It is worth also calling out that the V8 is horrendously thirsty on the highway because it only has a five speed manual. It is sitting right in its turbo spool range at 2000 RPM at 100 k's an hour. So you are constantly working the engine and it ends up using more fuel on the highway than it does in and around the city, which is pretty remarkable. Um, so let's jump back into the four cylinder and see how that goes in comparison. 
So time to have a crack at the four cylinder. Uh, we'll set this to three kilonewtons. I'm curious to see whether this is better or not. Obviously you've got four less cylinders to work with, but um, we'll see how it goes. The heat is picking up now, so I'm gonna make it slightly challenging, but um, I'm up for it. Uh, one other thing, I'm gonna put it in power mode as well. Traction is off, build up some revs. All right. Jeez, almost feels like the load isn't even on. All right. That is absolutely powering away, nice. There's 70, 80, it is starting to slow down now. 90, let's see if it'll break through 100. There's 100. Nice. All right. Perfect. Let's do our fuel economy. Okay. There you go. You could see it was much quicker to get to 100 k's an hour at just over 34 seconds. But also surprising was 0 to 90. It was a much closer margin between the two. 20.98 seconds for the four-cylinder version of the 70 series, uh, which was around five seconds quicker than the V8. On fuel economy, though, it was interesting. It averaged 34.3 litres per 100 k's when we did our lap of the bowl with the load running. And that is an increase of 257% over the standard high fuel economy. So it is a massive jump, which is surprising when you consider it's got four less cylinders, so it should be using less fuel, but it looks like those turbos are really working that engine hard. And it does show you with the acceleration times, there is a big benefit to be had when you jump from 430 Newton meters with the manual 70 to 500 Newton meters with the four cylinder auto. So um, a big difference there. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to our hill road, and this is where we're going to put a three and a half ton load on the back of these see how it goes over some challenging terrain that you'd expect to see in country Australia. Okay, so we've seen how it works in theory, but what is it actually like in the real world? We've got our 3,500 kilo brake trailer on. This is our hill road. So this is a road that simulates a country road here in Australia, and it includes a really steep climb along with a gradual long descent. So we'll be able to test uh, engine power and also uh, engine braking as well. Plus a couple of uh, sort of exits from tighter turns as well to really give us an indication of how much pickup this has, especially when we compare it against the full cylinder. So let's set off and see how we go. I like that, it's got a little hill hold function there. So uh, as you're setting off, we're on a slight descent. It'll hold the trailer for us uh, using the car's brakes. All right. So, so far, so good. We'll trek on and uh, see how it goes on this hill road circuit. One thing I'll be interested to see as well, as we sort of snake our way through here, is whether we get any negative effects on air conditioning performance, especially under throttle, and also whether we have any issues due to the narrow track at the rear. So track at the rear is about, uh, I think it's between 40 and 50 mil narrower on each side compared to the front track. So here we are, I've already had to drop back to second here for what is not really a massive hill. I'll test out that track issue with just a bit of steering input once the speed picks up on a straight section of road in uh, both vehicles. Okay, first challenge is our hairpin. Out of the hairpin is a decent gradual climb. This is just a good test of engine braking at low speed and also Feels like as we come around here. All right, that is all good. Get on the throttle now out of here. Yeah, once we get into the spooling band with the turbo there above 2000 RPM, it's willing to get up and move. And if we keep it there, it's actually not too bad. But if I do jump up another gear to third, it drops away pretty quickly and then we lose everything. So you really have to keep it above 2000 RPM for it to be singing and confident climbing. Okay, so we're going to gradual climb here. You can see we're already dropping there. We're under 2000 RPM. Now I'm going to have to grab second. Oh, this V8 is having to work for it. I'll be curious to see how it goes up our big hill and I'm hoping it actually makes it up there. Uh, it could be challenging. Okie dokie, now this is the one I'm slightly concerned about because it is a steep climb. All right, so it's a 15.5% grade. I've got to really get on it here. 
So second gear isn't going to cut it, it's already dropping down there. Yeah, we're out of the uh, spooling band. One and a half thousand, I'm going to have to come back to first here. That's interesting, all right. So first we'll rev it all the way out. Grab second. Yeah, it's just not enough. It's going to have to have to be first gear for this. <laughs> this is a tough climb. All right. Look, the positive is that we <laughs> haven't lost any air conditioning performance, even though we did have to dive back to first there. So it was having to really work for that. Um, to the point where I'm just like, no, this is a V8, shouldn't have to be working that hard to achieve that kind of climb. So it is interesting, uh, perhaps if this was fitted with an auto transmission, it'd be a different story, but yeah, it was uh, really struggling with that. Okay, so let's test the effects of this narrow rear track now. I'm driving straight ahead here, Just put a little bit of steering input in, wow. That is really noticeable. So typically with uh, vehicles like this, I mean, you should have, I, I really don't understand why they don't, but you should have a rear track that is the same width as the front track. If it isn't, you get that net effect where the car is kind of wobbling around because your front wheels are, are leading the rear of it. So it is really interesting. If you know why they've gone with a narrow rear track, as in a narrower rear track than the front track, let me know in the comments section below, but it definitely does it no favours at all. It feels very unstable when you do put slight steering inputs in. So. It'll be uh, interesting to see if it does the same thing with the 79 as well. Alrighty, and this is the final bit of our test here. It's just a long descent, just gives us a good idea of what it's like in terms of engine braking. It's perfectly fine. Third gear there is holding at 70 k's an hour down the hill. Not really running away from us, so that's all sort of pretty straightforward. So, alright, um, yeah, not the best experience in the world, but let's hop into the four-cylinder and see if that's any better teamed with an auto transmission. Alrighty, it is. It's bloody roasting today. Moving in and out of these cars in the heat, getting the trailer on, it is a fair bit of work. So uh, we're in the 79 now, and just as a reminder, we've got uh, all the extra weight in this, so it matches the 76 in terms of its curb weight. So let's see how this goes. Instead, it's gonna be, I guess, easier to work with because it's you know an auto that's just gonna be doing everything itself. I'm gonna put it into power haul mode so that's going to just give us a bit more throttle for longer and it'll optimize the gears as well although at the moment <laughs> it's having to to work a little bit there so all right let's see how it goes so it's interesting just as a side note these power modes are a bit of a furphy because they don't actually give you any extra power they just give you the illusion of more power and the way they do that is by adjusting the throttle map so where in the V8, for example, 50% throttle would be 50% throttle regardless of how you're driving it. Here, 50% throttle when power mode is not on is 50%. But then when you do have power mode on, what it'll do when you get down to that 50% of throttle, it might be at 75 or 80%. So it gives you the illusion that you've got more power to work with. But once you hit the limit of that power, you are sort of, you're on your own. You really can't sort of get anything extra out of that. So. Uh, regardless of which mode you're in, if you are at full throttle, you are only ever going to be at full throttle power. It doesn't actually give you anything extra. Okay, so let's try a little bit of engine braking here. Drop that back to second there. Yeah, see, so it's not providing as much engine braking as the V8. But that's okay. Here comes our hairpin. We'll see what it's like out of here. V8 really struggled coming out of this uh, into an immediate climb, so this does. Yes, yeah, so it's already bogging down there, but the harder I go on the throttle, I'm now at full throttle. It's far more interested in giving me movement. So already there, I can feel that extra torque is actually helping us out. Yeah, here's another one. So I had to drop down to second here in the 76 and I can just confidently stay in the throttle there. Almost at full throttle, but it is still moving it along really nicely. Okay, now time for our 15.5% grade. Let's see how this fares compared to the V8. Let's roll on to that. So I'm pinned to the board now. 
Yeah, okay. So it is dropping down. Mind you, it is keeping keeping speed. So we're doing 37 k's an hour, but it is sticking at 37. At this point, I had to drop back to first gear twice in the V8. Second gear didn't have anywhere near enough. And now we're picking up speed as well as we get closer to the top. So yeah, that extra torque really pays dividends. Even when you have weight in the rear to get this to match up to the 76 plus 350 kilos of down ball weight uh, in addition to that that trailer on the back it is actually still quite confident to drive now here's our straight section so this has the same track issue that the wagon does it doesn't feel as affected by it though so this feels still has the sort of nose leading the tail a little bit but it feels far more confident when it is just moving along. So I'm really surprised by how much better the four cylinder is performing than the V8. I think a lot of people are gonna be eating their words. Okay, and final run here is gonna be our descent at 70. We'll drop that back to third, just like we did in the V8. See how that goes. Yeah, it is climbing speed a little bit there. I think the gearing is probably a little worse off here in the auto. You're having to sort of work the gears a little bit more, but it is sort of fine. And I can't drop to second either, so I'm gonna to have to ride the brake on the way down here. So yeah, look, I think maybe the gearing could be a little bit better. I know a lot of people don't like Ford's 10 speed auto, but ultimately having extra gears to work with just gives you those individual steps that you can play with. Here with a six speed, you are quite limited in terms of how much versatility you have there. But yeah, look, uh, on our, I guess, realistic drive route here, the four cylinder has absolutely blown away the V8. There is no question uh, of that at all. Okay, towing done. Now it is time to do a little bit of drag racing. I know that's the most ridiculous thing in the world, but we're here. We wanted to see which one is quicker in a straight line. Uh, what we've done, given there is a weight difference between the 76 and the 79, we've actually loaded the 79's tray up with some additional weight so that they both weigh the exact same. So it should mean then that the only difference is the drivers, but just the drivetrains as well. So, all right, I'm gonna kick off uh, in first gear with traction off. Then we're gonna come back for another run where I take off in second to see if it makes any difference. Um, Jack, you ready? I am ready, yes. Okay, Sean, count us in. And launching on go in three, two, one, go. All right, let's go, let's go. It's got some absolute legs. Third, I've kind of got a little bit of a jump. He just had me. If we had more room, I reckon I would catch up to him, but let's go try second gear first because I reckon that's where the money's at. He's got you in my sights, Jack. <laughs> All right, run number two. I had a nice start there, but we'll go second gear start this time and see if we can make up a bit of lost ground on old mate Jack over there. So traction off. Jack, you ready to roll? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Sean, count us in. And watching on go in three, two, one, go. All right. Go, 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 go. Yeah, third gear's where it's at for me. Uh, he's just pulling away ever so slightly and yeah, he's got me. All right, so the four cylinder is <laughs> definitively quicker than the V8, which is a little bit disappointing for me. Um, all right, I've got one more trick up our sleeve here and that is a rolling acceleration race. I wanna see whether he's still got the legs once we're already moving. That way it takes my terrible gear shifting out of the uh, <laughs> equation here. Now, this is how this is gonna work. Uh, we're going to go third gear, 50 k's an hour. Reason it's 50 k's an hour in the 79 with the auto box, if you try and lock it in third at under 50 or a little bit under 50, it'll drop back to second first, whereas if it's at 50, it kind of just holds that. So, we'll get up to 50 k's an hour. All right, Jack, line up. Here we go, there's 30, 40, and 50, all right, three, two, one, go. <laughs> go, come on, go on, baby, let's go, let's go. 
Oh, that was close. <laughs> All right, I think we're going to have to go to our adjudicator over here, Sean. Sean, that was, I think, the closest drag race we've ever had. Uh, we need the official ruling here on who was quickest. <laughs> Don't. Yes? <laughs> Perfect. Sorry, Jack, to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> what? <laughs> so there you go. Um, once you eliminate the start, which is always going to be the slowest in a manual, especially one like this where you don't have launch control or any sort of silly stuff. Why would it have launch control? But um, yeah, once you take that out of the equation, the V8 still has legs in gear. So I would love to see one of these with an auto transmission because I reckon it would probably gobble up the four cylinder once it actually had a bit of a decent start and uh, was attached to a decent gearbox as well. So that drag race was just a little bit of fun, but if you do want to see the actual numbers and how this went, we've got them up on the screen now. And uh, I'm curious as well, do you want to see how these go up against the Hilux? Because I reckon we need to organize a drag race there as well to see whether the Hilux is now quicker or slower than the four cylinder 70 series. Uh, what I'm also going to do now is just be quiet for a little while so you can actually hear these going across the quarter mile and see exactly what they sound like. Okay, so there it is, Land Cruiser 70 Series V8 against Land Cruiser 70 Series four-cylinder. We weighed them up so they were the same, we've put them through their paces, and as much as you probably don't want to hear this, the four-cylinder is light years ahead of the V8 in terms of the performance. You just cannot match the four-cylinder when it comes to comparing these two. But I've got to be 100% honest, I spent a fair bit of time in the 76 wagon uh, with the manual V8. It was just something about manually shifting and just the noises that it makes. And, you know, it's not a vehicle designed to go places fast, but it is just really enjoyable to drive. So even though the four cylinder is technically better in every single way, in my mind, the V8 still has a place in my heart, even though it will be extinct pretty soon as emissions regulations get harder. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. Is there anything in this video that you liked or didn't like or thought that we got something wrong? Let me know in the comments section below and we'll have a little look at it. But until next time, take it easy.